Hi everyone, so this video is about Graham's number is too big for the universe. So first of all, in this video universe, uh, we are referring to the observable universe, of course. So in terms of uh, physically, um, how many atoms or fundamental, uh, fundamental particles in the universe? Well, it's around 10 to the power of 80, which is smaller than a Google. And what if you fill the entire universe with grains of sand that would be around 10 to the 90, which is still smaller than a Google? What if you fit the entire universe with uh, fundamental particles that would be around 10 to 120 particles to fill the universe? Uh, which is slightly bigger than a Google, and um, and then in terms of physically, the smallest volume ever defined in physics is called the Planck or Planck volume, and if you fill the whole universe with Planck volumes, it will be around ten to the hundred and eighty-five Planck volumes. Um, so of course, this number is way smaller than Graham's number, uh, and in terms of the number of arrangements of all these Planck volumes, it's around, if you um, we, if you allow repeating, there will be around, you know, 10 to 185 to the power of itself. So, which is around this number over here. Again, way smaller than Graham's number. So, physically, if you count things or even arrangement of something, Graham's number, of course, is way too big for the universe. And then, what about probability? Can you beat uh, Graham's number with probability. So what's the most unlikely thing to happen in the universe? So in terms of probability, we'll talk about 1 in n, so, or 1 over n. So n in this case will be a very big number, but however, n is still far, far smaller than Graham's number. So let's look at some examples of here. What are the most unlikely thing to happen? You know, for example, monkey typing Shakespeare in first try, what's that uh, probability? Um, well, of course, it's way, you know, in terms of 1 over n, uh, that n would still be far smaller than G64. What about um, a monkey, not just Shakespeare, typing every single book or writings that has ever been written, um, etc. Well, n would still be smaller than Graham's number, way smaller. And what if we change the number of monkeys, not just one, but the number of monkeys is equal to 10 to 185. So 10 to 185 monkeys... That n would still be far smaller than Graham's number. Um, and then next, what about winning lottery? Um, so let's say the Powerball, it has a chance of 1 in 300 million. So in that case, n is, n is 300 million. So of course, n is way smaller than Graham's number. And then what about you win not just one uh, lottery, but every single lottery, maybe once a week or twice a week, I don't know. From the Big Bang all the way to the heat death of the universe, there will be a lot and a lot of uh, lottery. Um, that n, the probability is still smaller than G64. So we're talking about winning every single one twice a week. From the Big Big Bang all the way to the heat death, every single one, what's the chance of that? Uh, that's a crazy small probability. What about you winning not just the Powerball, you're winning every single lottery available in the world? And what about not just you, everyone in the world, uh, 8 billion or 7.8 billion people, you know, playing the lottery, every single lottery in the world by just picking random numbers, you know, in the lottery. Um, and what if the number of people is 10 to the 185? The probability of winning, all these people winning all the lottery in the world from the Big Bang all the way to hit that is still the chance N here. 1 over N is still, you know, N is still way smaller than Graham's number. And then what about um, quantum teleportation? That's, you know, some of the most unlikely thing to happen. Um, you know, just a single particle teleporting from, you know, one place to another is already a relatively small probability. You know, the further the distance, of course, the smaller the probability. What if your entire person, so all the atoms in your body just teleport, let's say, 50 kilometers away? Um, that's an extremely, extremely small prob probability. What about, you know, the entire Earth or entire planet or the entire solar system, which has a lot of atoms in it, or the entire galaxy just teleport to the another part of the universe? That would be an unimaginably uh, small probability. However, that N, 1 over N, is still way smaller than Graham's number. 
What about time? Um, so G64 years is a very long time. That is way, way, way longer than the Punker recurrence time, um, which you, I have videos on that, or you can look it up online what that is, which is, you know, the time required for the universe to repeat itself, which in turn also way longer than the time required for quantum fluctuation generated uh, Big Bangs to produce a universe identical to our own. Um, so this process, takes less time than Pranker recurrence time, which in turn takes way less time than G64 years. And for G64 years, you know, uh, you, let's say you, you live that long, you know, your memory, you will experience everything, um, every single possibility. You will experience everything, basically, and repeat many, 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 many times. Um, well, anyway, um, and then here uh, it's a uh, cool explanation I found online that explains kind of explains how big Graham's number is. So let's look at it. So first, let's g equal to g64, and let a be number of atoms in the universe. So which is 10 to 80. Of course, g is bigger than a. Um, and then next, so let uh, d1 be the number of digits in g. And in that case, D1 will still be bigger than A. Again, A is the number of atoms in the universe. And next, let D2 um, be the number of digits in D1. D2 is still bigger than A. Same thing, D3. And then D3 is still bigger than A. Now let T be the number of times you have to repeat this process um, such that D of T is less than A, less than B. So the number of times here, you know, to do this, you know, um, such that dt is smaller than a, and in that case, t would still bigger than a. So the number of times you have to do this, uh, so that this thing is smaller than a, would the number of times is still much, much bigger than the number of atoms in the universe. And now let's continue because you, you're trying to figure out how big is Graham's number. Now let uh, p1 be the number of digits in t. Well, P1 was still bigger than A, same thing, P2, P2 is still bigger than A, and P3 is still bigger than A. Now, let K be the number of times you have to repeat this process, so these process over here, such that P, K is smaller than A, and K would still be much bigger than A. And now, um, let R1 be the number of digits in K, and R1 would still be bigger than A. And you continue this process, da, 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 da. now let f be the number of times you have to repeat this process such that r f is smaller than a. f would still be bigger than a. Well again, feel free to pause the video if you want, uh, or if you want to slow down. And now let x be the number of times you need to repeat this entire process. So not just this to here or here to here, you have to repeat everything all the way from the beginning. Um, such that, you know, um, so let x be the number of times you have to repeat this entire process, x would still be greater than a. So this is, you know, for layman people who don't know how big is Graham's number, this is a very cool explanation of how, just to give you an idea how big Graham's number is, even though you all do all this process, how many times you have to repeat this, you know, this entire thing, x would still be greater than the number of atoms in the universe. However, that's not it, even if you let g be equal to g1. So remember, at first we let g equal to Graham's number, but now let g be g1. So just the first step of Graham's number, these all of the above would still be true even for g1. So now imagine how big is Graham's number. Actually, I have estimated the uh, smallest g for the above to be true, the smallest number of g for this entire thing to be true would be around 10 3 arrows 10 to the power of 80. so as long as your g is greater than this number this entire thing holds true and again this number here is smaller than g1 therefore this whole thing applies for g1 and g1 only has four arrows uh graham's number has g63 arrows so even just adding one arrow brings you away to a much bigger world um, and G2 has G1 number of arrows just remember that so again this you know but because you 
when you talk about the number of digits, you're just applying log in base 10, so which doesn't reduce Graham's number by that much. Basically, you're asking for, you know, how many times you have to repeat this process. It's basically around Graham's number because Graham's number is built uh, or constructed using methods way more powerful, way more powerful than, um, you know, power tower or something like that. So if you want to say how many times you have to do this, it's always around Graham's number itself, or, you know, or how many universe uh, do you need to have Graham's number of atoms? Then the answer is around Graham's number uh, of number of universe. So anyway, um, this just give you a quick idea of how big Graham's number is. Graham's number is just way too big for the universe. If you think you know how big that is, you're probably not. So anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice day.